if you're not a confident cook but want to cook something really delicious and hearty at home, I always recommend starting with a stew, particularly something like this, which is my lamb in red wine. And I'm going to do mine in a pressure cooker because you get that beautiful slow cooked finish in no time at all. What I'm doing is sealing off my lamb shanks and you want to do this in batches. So I've put two in already. These are gorgeous organic lamb shanks. They've got a lovely sweetness after they're cooked and they're not too large, which I like. So it's a perfect amount for one person. So one shank per person. Now, once I've done the first batch, I'll take them out and place them onto a plate and then we'll seal off the next batch. This is a critical point when you're making a stew because the caramelisation is going to give so much flavour to the sauce. So allow it to become really crispy on the outside. Now I'm going to season this with a really interesting spice. This is all spice. Now I'm just sprinkling that over the lamb shanks. I like to sprinkle it over the lamb shanks after they've been sealed. If I add that spice at the beginning, what happens is it burns and it loses all that beautiful perfume. So sprinkle it over and I'll turn the second batch of lamb shanks, give them a few more minutes. Now while they're cooking, we'll get on to the classic mirepoix, some onions that I'll just roughly slice you don't have to be too pedantic here, but again, this is a great way of practicing your knife skills at home. Right, the second batch of lamb shanks are looking great. So we'll take them out of the pressure cooker and again, season it quite generously with that allspice. Now I'll add a little more oil into the base of the pot and then we'll add our onions. So I'll start cooking my onions and turn it down. You don't want it to be too hot. Just give them a quick toss. And we want some caramelisation on them. Just keep an eye on them though, we don't want them to burn. While they're cooking, I'll slice two stalks of celery, just to chop, and then also two carrots. I'll also add them with the onions, and then cook them for about eight to 10 minutes so they really start to caramelise nicely together. Okay, these veggies have been cooking nicely. You can see we've got some colour on them. I'll now add some salt. All right, now I'm going to add some tomato paste. This is going to give the sauce a lovely richness. So about two tablespoons. And before I add any liquid to this, you want to cook off this tomato paste. You don't want it to have a raw flavour or an acidic flavour, so cooking it off is the key. And that only takes a few minutes. I'll also add one bulb of garlic. I'll cut lengthways and in it goes along with one sprig of rosemary. Now, lamb and rosemary are synonymous with each other, but you can also use other hard herbs, such as bay leaves and thyme, work really nicely with it. Give that a toss. Perfect. Now we can return our lamb shanks and just nestle them in between all of those veggies. And because they are nice and small, they'll fit perfectly. Cover them up. And now we can deglaze with some red wine, 500 millilitres of red wine. And I always suggest using a full bodied red wine when you're cooking like a Cabernet Sauvignon or a Shiraz works nicely too. Now you can see that wine is bubbling away, but we need to reduce that by one third just to cook off the rawness of the alcohol. Then I'll add some stock and you just need enough stock to cover all of these little lamb shanks. I'll place the lid on and I'll pressure cook this for 45 minutes. That's all it needs. If you're doing it the traditional way, I would recommend popping it into the oven and cook it for about two hours at 160 degrees. Okay, these lamb shanks are cooked. It smells delicious in here. Now for the reveal. Oh, that looks spectacular. So be really careful when you take the lamb shanks out of the liquid because they are so soft. And I want to show them off on the bone. Look at that, they look like big lollipops. And we'll place them just on the plate for now so we can reduce our sauce. Now, while they rest there, let's just quickly reduce this sauce. I'm going to strain it into this pot. Just be careful not to splash it everywhere. 
And then we want to just force through all those gorgeous carrots and those onions because, again, that's going to give it some sweetness. Look, if you don't want to do this stage, of course you can serve it with the vegetables, but this just gives the presentation that extra special look. So that's going to take just a few moments to thicken up. And now let's start plating this up. Some beautiful mashed potatoes with lamb shanks, always appropriate. So a nice spoonful on one side and you need the mashed potato so it mops up all that beautiful sauce. And then I'm going to get two forks just to show you how soft this meat is. Look how it just falls away. See how tender it is? I think that's why we all have that love affair with these beautiful lamb shanks because they stay so moist throughout the cooking process. All right, I'm going to take this one over here and place it on the plate, showing off the bone. And then this gorgeous jus just spoon over the top. See how it just makes the dish a little more refined, a little more elegant after draining it and reducing it. And have a look at the gloss on that. You know what, I love sauce so much. I'm going to add three spoonfuls so it looks like a little moat around the lamb shanks and that delicious mashed potatoes. That for me is just pure bliss on a cold winter's night. This is what I crave.